All right. Good evening, everyone. It is 6.30. We're going to get started tonight. Uh, Dave, if you want to start with roll call, please. Cody. Present. And Mark is not here. And Present. Jennifer. Present. And I am present. And uh, full disclosure, Mark is on vacation, so we hope he's enjoying this. Um, those that are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Uh, with an open mind, we'll establish an atmosphere that allows expression of all views, even when views are not in line with all members, being respectful of time. We work collaboratively with the district administrator by having open and honest conversations around district priorities. We work collaboratively with all stakeholders to monitor key indicators so that equitable teaching and learning results in high achievement. We will work toward building a trusting environment where both students and staff can reach their full potential and celebrate successes in academics, the arts, and athletics. All right, and then public comments tonight. Public comments during this period of the agenda, the board welcomes comments from the public on any item not on the agenda. Please know that the pursuant of state law, the board cannot engage in conversation with you, but may ask questions. The board may refer the item to staff, a standing committee, or a future agenda for discussion and action. Each person wishing to speak will have up to three minutes to speak. Speakers are asked to provide their name, address, and topic for discussion. So with that being said, is there any public comments tonight? All right. Could have saved myself a paragraph of reading, uh, reading if I would have asked first. So uh, thank you. Uh, we're going to go into um, an introduction. If uh, Nathan, if you wanted to push that forward. For yes. Here. Well, we have a new seat. At the, we'd have a new person sitting at the table and he could introduce himself. So we, we have Jason Julius, our new Alexander Middle School principal. And please introduce yourself, Julie. Uh, good evening, everyone. Great to see uh, all of you. Some of you. Uh, Familiar faces uh, on day three, anyway. <laughs> um, it's exciting to be here. Uh, in day three, I've met so many people. Uh, everybody has been fantastic. Uh, I'm originally from Reedsburg area, so not a stranger to Nakusa, um, but not overly familiar with the area, and it's just been beautiful. Uh, our family has relocated up into central Wisconsin. Uh, we're excited to start that next chapter, and we're, I'm very excited to start my next career here. So thank you for the warm, warm welcome. I'm hoping to meet everybody's needs. Uh, I just don't know what those are yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We're happy to have you here. Uh, showcasing schools and student learning. CWSA update. I do not see Anita here tonight. Uh, well, a note is that we have a new board president now. Um, Jimmy Herman, and so that, but the CWSA has the summer off right at this piece, so. Okay. Awesome. A lot of vacations this summer, which is good to good to hear. So uh, overarching results, 23-24. Now, a note that I just make on this one is board members open that up. Notice it was blank. Now, um, one of the things about that is that you'll note that J July is skipped in the nature. And it basically, this is the one month where we don't do, it doesn't fit under one of the overarching results. Now, another piece of that is that I'm going to be reformatting that that document to be able to include a few a couple other things and so i'll share that with you in board updates about how that would look but we will be ready and we'll be looking at those overarching results as a result of the august uh, board meeting awesome. thank you Nathan. uh all right we're going to move forward with communicating with the board with our business manager lynn knight so i'll be brief um our audit starts in a week and a half so i'm kind of busy preparing for that um as you probably well cody as you know um, for the past three years, we've done a for, Fund 46 transfer. I will probably be contact, contacting you next week to uh, authorize that sure. transfer. Okay. Um, it's basically, um, we look at our revenues and expenses, and we, if we have excess revenues, we like to put it in Fund 46, which is our capital improvement fund. Right now, we have $1.4 million in there, but that is for when we have to replace the turf, when we have to replace the track, when we have to buy a new boiler. At least we have the money there, and it's not affecting instruction then. So we have the ability to make that transfer uh, for the 22-23 school year 
before July 31st of 2023. So I'll be contacting you next week. Other than that, I'm just going to defer the rest of my time to the presentation later. Sure. That's a very healthy number. So cool to yes. see you. This well, time. to us. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Director of Student Services, Brian Grill. I'm going to defer my time to later in the meeting. All right. And I'm sure maybe Alexa, our student representative, is on vacation too. Just guessing. Keith, any updates from her or an email maybe? Um, I have not. No, I trying to think if uh, well, we've had a board meeting since the blood drive, which would be their big, big thing. And then we'll be pretty soon heading into uh, fall athletics will be starting up in the end of this month. But otherwise, that's yeah, I know. My days honestly are consumed with a meeting, trying to meet with all the ninth grade students and their parents. And so those are my days. And not to put you on the spot, but summer school going good, all the summer school sports programs and perfect. Very busy. Awesome. Good to hear. All right. So over at uh, Humpty, summer school started up this week and just really have uh, just, it's going very well. Got a lot of excited. Again, you walk through Humpty, you get a lot more hugs than other buildings, but right? <laughs> some I'm getting used to. But, but that is, but things are, we're off to a great start and we're excited over there too. Uh, we'll look forward to Alexa's updates next month about things that are going on in the district um, and athletics and co curriculars. Um, we'll jump into policy governance then tonight. Uh, BSR1 governance, management connection, uh, and BSR2 unity of control. So in our workshop, uh, we had the opportunity to review both of those. Um, I'll start with BSR1 governance, uh, management of control. Any more follow-up or feedback from that conversation? I know it was a, a pretty brief paragraph, but um, I don't think there was anything that we wanted to comment on other than changing up a few of the language. We wanted to change the language from we to I um, as a team. So, yeah, no, I or flip flop from flip flop those around. So, uh, any more further conversations on that or thoughts? All right. So, then at this time, I'll look for a motion um, for BS SR1 governance management connection. I move. Got a first. A second. And a second. Those all in favor, please say aye. I oppose none. Motion carried. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Uh, BSR2, unity of control. Similar to the last aspect of the governance policy, we were changing those two uh, languages around. Any further thoughts or um, conversations from the last time we met from the workshop? Simple enough. I'll look for a motion then for BSR2. Mm -hmm. Got a first by Dave. A second. Second by Anne. Those all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. All right. Governance policy. Uh, the next one here is GP1 board purpose. Do you have the description? I was going to read that one. Okay. GP board purpose right here. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so the policy statement for GP1 board purpose is the Board of Education uh, the District of Nakusa represents, leads, and serves the district's owners and holds itself accountable to them by committing to act in their best interest and by ensuring that all board and organizational action is consistent with law and the board's policies. Uh, just an example, the board's purpose is to assure that the organization achieves the results described in the board's results policies and that it operates according to values expressed in the board's operational expectation policy. And we did have some good conversations around this, like the previous ones that we just had motions on. Uh, anything more for tonight? All right, and I did touch base with Mark um, before vacation on these policies as well. Nothing has changed on his end too, so I'll look for a motion for approval on this one. Um, First by Dave. I'll second it. Second by Jennifer. Those all in favor, please say aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carried. All right, we're moving along tonight. Thank you, everyone. And then OE2, operational expectations. I'll read a summary of that one here. Thank you, Nathan. The district administrator shall designate at least one other executive staff member who is familiar with the board's governance process and issues of certain concern and is capable of assuming district administrator responsibilities on an emergency basis. 
Um, so with that synopsis, we talked about it was Brian Grill, and then it was Lynn <laughs> who's smiling. So um, any further feedback or, or conversations on that? You guys are good with the governance policies, <laughs> operational expectations. Team effort. Team effort. All right. You'd get both sure. of us, not one of us. <laughs> Perfect. Um, not that Nathan's going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're motivated to keep me healthy and working. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll utilize that school wellness policy then to make yeah, sure yeah. everyone knows. So, um, all right. If there's no other conversations, I'll look for a motion for OE2. Mm -hmm. First by Dave. Okay. Second by Ann. Those all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. Motion carried. The last <laughs> one here uh, OE4 personnel administration. Nathan? Uh, the district administrator shall assure the recruitment, employment, development, evaluation, and compensation of district employees in a manner necessary to enable the district to achieve its results policies. Uh, we had good conversations around this, even discussed uh, the wage study and uh, the community that we have going on in the district, and we feel like that that's been going well. We've been able to retain teachers and um, continue with uh, ongoing education and credits to kind of give them a boost along with giving our staff and students and the districts um, more education and learnings too. So it's a full circle. Uh, any other conversations on this or thoughts before we look for approval to push that together? Or I do have anything one. more you want to add? Nathan? Yeah, just briefly. One of the questions that was raised by Mark at that point is he, he had asked um, as we were discussing the various policies about how often support staff salaries are reviewed for, for raises and that. And that that is every two years. Um, we do that in conjunction with because the the um, the state has a biannual budget to let us know what we're working with. And so every and so we look at local um, dis, we look at surrounding districts, what is competitive to make sure that we're very, we're very solidly there, so we can retain our staff. And but that is something that we look at that those raises. Um, those come in, we look at those and make adjustments at, in two year intervals because that's what it's tied to. We had a large raise in the last one. This is a non, so we're going to be looking at that. There's no raises on that going into this year, but we'll be looking on that. So there was, his question is how often that was. So I talked with Lynn and got a little more feedback and that was the answer I had. So perfect. Any, any other thoughts before we wrap this up with the motion? All right, um, at this time, looking for a motion for OE4. Mm -hmm. uh, first by Dave, second. second by Ann. Those all in favor, please say aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carried. Perfect. Other board work, um, we have the camera system upgrade. Yes. So um, I'm going to let uh, Eric and Josh present in a minute. I just want to kind of give you the background. I did uh, update you in the board update. Um, we have some ESSERS, ESSERS three monies that have to be obligated by June 30th, 2024. Um, we have in, we have always, as a board, we have always said that we were not going to spend the ESSERS funds with unsustainable uh, positions. So most districts are facing a fiscal cliff right now when that ESSERS money is gone. Nakusa is not. We are going to be fine. So we're an anomaly in the state, probably in the nation. Um, so uh, we thought that by using the ESSERS funds, we looked at what we could use that we could sustain. Well, our camera system is failing. And I think uh, Josh and Susan can vouch for that, that uh, we need a um, robust camera system in order to keep our school district safe and our students and staff safe. So we thought that maybe we could look at the ESSERS 3 fund and purchase that new camera system with the ESSERS 3. Uh, I talked to Brian, I talked to Dave, or, uh, DPI, and this is an allowable cost under ESSERS 3. I wanted to make sure that we were following all the rules and, you know, dotting all the I's and crossing the T's. So um, Eric and Josh are, not, yeah, Josh are going to talk about the old system and the benefits of the new system, and you're going to be completely amazed. So I'll let you guys at it. No stress, Eric. <laughs> I talk to people every day. <laughs> um, I'd like to apologize first. When you create a PowerPoint, you know, you try to find like some new theme or whatever, and for some reason after I print it out, it looks like a baby shower. So <laughs> <laughs> just I didn't really, yeah. There's no boys and girls. Um I'm just gonna pass these out just so you guys got it. Um, 
So, um, about a year ago, I've been working on this project for about a year. Um, like I, like Lynn had mentioned, about ten years ago, ten plus years ago, when Mike Crum was a pre uh, president, the uh, principal over at the high school, Keith was over at the elementary no, school. No, I was actually the middle when, school. The no, when the cameras were updated because I thought about this when I saw it. I was the AP at the high school, and Sean Woods was the SRO. <laughs> so it was a while ago. So 13, 14 years yeah. ago. Yeah. And since then, we've had a lot of people move different seats. And with that comes different ideas on where cameras should be, and what you need to look at, what we should be, what we should be doing. Um, we have been kind of putting band-aids on those, on that system the, the entire time, adding cameras here, swapping out cameras here. We still have some some other stuff, but to get into, so I guess to give a little more history. So what we did is I created, uh, I worked with the companies. I got some bids on, on some things on how to replace some old cameras, how to add some new cameras and some dead spots. Worked with Susan, worked with Docs, worked with Don. And it's been kind of a mess. Um, I used to submit quotes. We want to add some other stuff. Um, it's been just a constant snowball going down. Then uh, the vendor, Harlan, that we work with or whatever came up with Mercada. Mercada sends me about five emails a day and about a Yeti every six months trying to get my business. <laughs> and and that's no why I have about 10 Yetis now. Um, but they were way out of our price range. And so I sat and I listened, I went and looked at their thing and with being able to use S for dollars is gonna help with the solution. So Mercada, they're the leader of a cloud management system. We no longer, and they, they have 17,000 customers up there that are using their systems right now. Um, they so they combine security equipment. They have uh, video cameras, um, artificial intelligent devices, access control. They have about seven or eight different products that all meld into one solution. Um, I kind of gave you a history. We have a 10-year-old milestone system that we currently have right now, and it is kind of cumbersome to go through it. Um, it served its purpose at the time. We have 200 exteriors and interior cameras throughout the district between all three buildings, including the sports complex and the uh, concession stand. Um, the, all of those cameras are connected to one of two servers, one server being over here at the elementary school as a backup and one over at the high school. When we add cameras, all of that data that's being transferred down, we have to add storage to the servers. So every time we wanna add 10-ish cameras, now we gotta put a bill over here to upgrade our, our systems over there. Currently, we have about 43 cameras throughout the district that are fisheye cameras. If you know what those are, I have a picture coming up just so you guys can see them. And we have some unresponsive cameras that have been kind of a thorn for at least the entire school year last year. Um, we also need to upgrade, the quote that I got, the original quote to upgrade those 43 cameras is also a good chunk of money to upgrade the server because now everything is high def. Um, so traditional cameras, they only support, it's like a, it's like a security system at a, at a gas station. You only have so many cameras and they're they're connected to a server. You only can connect so many without having to, like I said before, um, update that server. <clears throat> We're always behind. Every time that I bring a, uh, the vendor in to, to look at cameras, we have a down camera, they're like, oh, you need to upgrade firmware here. You need to, this camera needs to be upgraded. So we're always behind the eight ball a little bit. Another big thing is, I can speak for myself, I never look at the cameras until Susan says, I need this camera from this date and time. So I don't know if cameras are down or if they're up. The majority of the time, the camera that you need is the camera that's down. For whatever reason, however that works, that's how it works. Finding the footage that you need, so Susan and Josh and everybody, you sit there, if you get a two-hour window, you have to sit and use that slider to see people kind of come in and come out and try to find what you're looking for. So if it's two hours worth of video, it probably takes two plus hours worth of time to try to find what you need, unless you get a report that's within a couple of months. Um, also, the other thing that we have is how we have it set up now is Wood County Dispatch has a VPN connection, which is kind of uh, 
an older way of connecting to it. And then they remote on to our server um, that way. They've had a lot of turnover over there. I doubt they even know how to do that anymore. Actually, we called and asked just to test them. <laughs> and the person we're talking to is like, what are you talking about? Yeah. The other <laughs> dispatcher that's been there for a while is like, no, we got it. And they're able to access it, but not all of them know. Mm -hmm. um, and adding cameras. Every year, hey, can we get a blind spot here? We got a camera here, we got a camera here. I mean, Josh, just in the last four months has added cameras or moved stuff around because of uh, reaching out to the buildings and, and, and getting their input. Um, just adding a camera has to be a cable pole. There's a cost to that. There's a cost to the license. There's a cost of buying the camera and then the storage of the server. So that's the traditional way of doing it. That's how we've been doing it for 10 years. And we've been slapping band-aids on it to keep it going. So fast forward to now. There's cloud-based cameras out there, and Verkata is that system. Um, they do not need a server. There's no server at all. You get a camera and you have a cable, so basically every camera that we're able to pull out, we'll be able to plug in a camera at that um, location. It uses an onboard SD card, so there is no um, holding of data at, at a server. All we need is a power over Ethernet connection. That's it, powers up the camera, good to go. You can connect to this camera system from any device at any time. Um, it's an app or it's a, a website that you log in. I can give um, temporary access. You wanna see a certain camera or whatever, I just send you, I can text you a link and then you'll be able to get in for an hour, two hours, however long you wanna get in. Um, you're like Mark down in Florida right now. He has a question, wants to log into the camera, he can log in and see the camera and export from that also. We don't have that access right now. Another feature is if a camera goes down, it texts everybody or it texts the people that are on the list, which is beautiful because we don't know what we don't know until we're trying to look for it. So, hey, the camera's down in the gym. All of a sudden it goes back up. They have 24-7 footage. I hop on a chat. They, they look at the camera. They ping it. They bring it up online. Nobody has to come on site. And the whole artificial intelligence stuff, if you guys have looked at any of that, it's crazy. Um, and I'll uh, have a couple slides, but AI is part of the solution. There's no extra equipment. We can have a thousand cameras. We can have 200 cameras. We just have to buy the camera and run the line. That's it. All these cameras have a 10 year hardware warranty at nine years, 11 months and 28 days that camera dies, we get a brand new camera. It's a, it's a one for one swap. So there's no more money being invested unless we're buying for a new location. Um, the traditional, if you kind of look at this picture, this is what we look at now. That is a fisheye camera. And the reason that that circle camera was put in there is because it's like a, a T crossing and you can kind of see down versus a one-way camera. Um, I'm sure everybody that's looked at cameras can attest. Whatever you need to look at seems to be like on the bottom corner. So you got to spin your head <laughs> to kind of see what you're looking for. These are part of the 43 cameras that we're planning on replacing at some point. Um, as you can see, the, the cameras are listed on the side. That slider down on the bottom, the dark red is where it senses movement. But there's movement that happens in between those red marks. So you kind of got to fiddle with that to see what you want. The cloud-based one, we have one trial camera right now that all I did was unplug the existing camera, plug the new one in in front of the main entrance at the middle school, and that's the view we get. Um, it's all 4K. That's just one view. Um, if we get approved to purchase the entire system, everything will be on a map. Everything, it'll, it'll show you when there's movement on the map. It's, there's so many things, and I'm learning new things every day. Um, if you move to the to the next page, this is part of the AI. You'll see key space, Susan's down in the more right. Every time that somebody comes to that camera, it takes a little snapshot with a timestamp. Um one of those, one of the benefits is that let's say I want to know where Keith come or where Keith went. I can click on his picture on this snapshot and it'll bring up every view of every camera where Keith was. Just like that. We don't have to scan and search for anything. You'll see me in the morning when I'm rocking and I use the restroom. And <laughs> you can, it, it, it's crazy. It also does, um, well, during the school year, you should see how many of these little snapshots because every kid that's coming in is constantly. Um, it does license plates and vehicles. You can hit vehicles and it'll have a picture of every vehicle that has it's sensed. And then we can zoom in on 
license plates. Another good thing about this is when you zoom in, it does not pixelate it. It zooms in oh, wow. pretty clear is, is how it is from the, the first thing. Um, yeah, that's that. It's kind of crazy. Next slide. I kind of put this in there just to, just to kind of give you an idea why it kind of does these things. So you can do searches. So let's say you get a report of a, of a student that was lighting a match and all you knew that he had is a red shirt and a backpack and you knew it was a boy. You can do a search and type in boy, uh, upper red backpack and everything that fits in that will come up with pictures like the guy on the right over here. So looking for a certain um, instance just saves us a bunch of time right there. What this is, is we can also tag, like Susan tagged Nathan, which I did not know until I looked up today. I'm like, holy crap, AI named you. Because your name was on it, but Susan put your name on there, so it didn't find you. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> um, but the cool thing is, is, so like my example here is a non-custodial parent. You have some offices that don't know who has access to the children or not. Well, let's say they come off and you can tag them as this is a, a, a non-custodial parent. And then any time that the camera sister kiss, camera system sees them, it'll send you a text. You know that they're in the district somewhere. So it's a, it's a CYA kind of thing. They have it here listed that this kid was fighting or whatever and it doesn't belong. But, um, so in summary, uh, it's a, this is a 10 year solution. Um, it's all plug and play. I mean, I, I, I think my estimate, we're gonna save about 99% of our man hours looking for things. Um, we don't have that on-site storage, so we don't have to burn things to DVDs anymore or have terabytes over terabytes of video footage that archived. We send a text and they're able to log in and do it. It's all via the browser and then like Wood County Dispatch, they're able just to log into a site, we give them access and they can see our cameras. Um, on the back end, they automatically update technology and AI features. And an example of that, when I was looking just to make some screenshots or whatever, I noticed Brian was walking up to the camera and he had a little green, um, like a, a trail piece on it. And I'm like, what is this? So I clicked on it and it, it took him 32 mm -hmm. seconds to get from the, the curb to the building because it did, wow. it timed you on how long he did. So you're able to go and see how long the people- I was about to say, get moving. That's a new feature <laughs> that was updated on the back end of the so, Josh, do you have anything else that you'd like to say? <laughs> oh, I think it's uh, very, very good to start because cloud based, like our all our taser, like our body cams and all our squad cams are all cloud based. We went to that. It's such a simple system to use, uh, to, to share stuff. So, like if uh, uh, we share with like district attorneys, Grand Rapids, Wood County, we can just share stuff back and forth. So, it's simple before, like we had to burn DVDs. Just the technology of trying to find somebody. I mean, this. How many kids might take off from the school? Like, hey, where did little Johnny go? And we can quick probably type him in and boom, okay, there he there he went. We could probably track him a lot faster than you know, we just manpower it and go out and grid search, you know, the school area. And so I think we could that's a benefit to it. And I think it's time our cameras are old. I think one of our main cameras, entry cameras in the high school has been on almost the whole year. And it's like that's the main camera kind of thing. That's where most of the stuff happens, you know. So I haven't had that all year to be like, oh yeah, something happened there. Well, yeah, it's great, <laughs> you know. So I think it's it's good. Um, and I think there isn't there more with like uh with Bertana with like our buzz-in systems. They have a couple different other solutions, they have intercoms, they have um, a couple other products. And if we were to get approved with this, we could bundle those products with it. So we have a one-stop shop and actually we would save money by using third party. Other so. so we're looking at the door system as well, and that would be part of the district budget. That would not be covered under Essers. So we're just trying to um, be more consistent and, you know, just have a modern system with a lot more security. So Sounds like there's a lot of positive attributes to the system. Will the Essers fund cover everything that we're looking to do everything in the camera system that is okay. correct yes and the reason it's the camera system is because a percentage has to go to learning loss and that's where we work together and that's where the pd planning covers that learning loss side because if we are to do everything we won't need that other requirement of essers three so and to clarify it'll cover for the 10 years 
Yes. Or they agree with that. Okay. Yes. So according to what you had said on us before, uh, it looks like we would have some money left over from the ESRs. Yeah. Most likely, yes. A little bit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Brian and I will strategize with Nathan to figure out how we're going to yeah, so figure we'll have, that we out. We can use that for something else. Yeah. yeah we just want to be careful not to um, create a crystal, uh, create a crystal, create a fiscal cliff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. this should help with the <clears throat> preparedness too, right, Josh? In yeah. an yeah, aspect. Abs so. Absolutely. I mean, so the, the plan is if it's approved, then um, Eric is probably going to call the vendor next week and get the ball rolling. So. How long does it take then? Okay. Um, so as far as the equipment, the, the longest part is going to be getting on the calendars of the, of the people that are going to be installing it because we're already over halfway through the summer, so plans are being made for that fall. Um, as far as equipment, with them being worldwide, the equipment's there. We can we can get it here fairly soon. It's just getting on the calendars. I have heard that as soon as September, or October time frame. So um, I just want to put the whole thing to bed because we've been yeah. Yeah, it's been a say that was the And it'll it'll cover uh, the athletic complex too. Then not just certain schools, yep. it'll you know, district wide. It'll be a one for one camera swap. Um, as far as the quote that I've seen. And if we need to add more cameras, we just have to buy the $100 camera and run a cable. Well, I'm not going to ask about how much the quote, the quote will be because the fund will uh, cover that. So yeah. um, any other questions? I think you've done a marvelous job. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Well, then at this time, um, thank you guys for your presentation. We'll look for a motion to approve the camera system upgrade. So moved. Uh, first by Dave. I'll second it. Second by Jennifer. Those all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, motion carried. Kudos to you guys. Good work. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Do you have any other questions for me or anything? I have another meeting. I gotta go to. So. You're good. Thanks, right. Eric. Yep. Thank, thank you. Eric. See you guys. All right. So we have some information here. Um, I believe this will be Brian Girl with the special education agreement 6630. Yep. So attached to your board agenda, we have two documents for many years, at least the last seven since I have been here. We've been in a partnership with Port Edwards being a smaller district. Um, for early childhood, they do not have an early childhood program. So if they were to have a student qualify, that's where they contract with NACUSA and the student comes here during early childhood. Um, and it has been a great agreement. And I'll say in many cases too, because once they hit the 4K, 5K, they are more than welcome to go back to Fort Edwards as, as their home district. In many cases, they actually, after working with our early childhood program, have decided to open and enroll to the Nakusa School District to remain here because they enjoy our teachers and the programs that we have. So, but this is an agreement that basically says if you have a three-year-old in Port Edwards that qualifies for special education services, we enter in and every year you get the students that we're entering into agreements for that you sign. But this is the program agreement saying, what are we offering Port Edwards students? How do we bill you guys for those things? Who claims Medicaid and all those logistical end of things? And it outlines our procedures on how we evaluate whether a student can attend here and we can meet their needs. So it just really outlines our procedures when working through an early childhood referral for a student to attend okay. here in Nakusa. So as you'll see in that agreement, and then also, too, we have one for our ID program. So as well, Port Edwards, being a smaller district, does not have a program for students with intellectual disabilities. And at each school, you'll know we have an ID program where we service students. And again, this just outlines our procedures for billing, Medicaid, and evaluating whether a student is available to attend here in Nakusa. And the reason I'm bringing these forward, we updated these about five years ago, and we just noticed that it was time to do additional updates, outline some procedures further because things have changed with IDEA and some rules. So we just wanted to make sure those were reflected in the agreement. So, so they don't have to open enroll if they want to go back to the court, but if they want to stay here, they do 
for the early childhood yeah. in some cases. Yeah. For our, our students with intellectual disabilities, this they don't have to do open enrollment because we have the 66030 in place. And I know Port Edwards is pretty small, but what do you usually see for numbers? Um, right now, last year, we had four students okay. who attended through the 66030. We have varied from year to year. The highest we have ever had in the time I've been here is nine students, but it just depends on the year. And our one that usually has the most fluctuation is the early childhood program because it just depends on how many birth to three referrals they have and things of that nature. But our students attending our RISE program, those students are consistently living in both our poor and Nakusa communities, and they continue year to year. And it generates about $40,000 in revenue for us. So Yeah, yeah and I, I do like the fact that some of them choose to stay too, which is mm -hmm. a positive. So mm -hmm. um, any questions for Brian? Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Thanks for the okay. information. Yes. Well done. And that will be coming to um, Dave, you are a clerk now, right? Yep. Yeah. So those at the end, you'll just have to sign because then we send them over to Port Edwards to sign as well. Okay. Um, student illness procedure, updates only. Yep. So the second document that you have there, it's just we notice um, Jade in becoming our school nurse along with Cami Lobner. We cannot thank Denise enough for all the work she did over the years here. But when it was just her, there was a lot to do and she was the only school nurse. So now the past few years when we've had two school nurses to have a full time, we revisited some documents. And what they noticed was our sick protocol document for the schools, everyone had it a little differently in each handbook. So she wanted to update it to have consistent language. So parents are getting told the same message building to building. So now like with fever, vomiting, diarrhea, all those things, and we accounted for most illness situations, it's now updated to say, hey, you have to be fever free for 24 hours before you can return to school. And that messaging is the same. The biggest change that um, she had to update in accordance with the FDA and everything else, her and Denise had this conversation with me prior to her leaving was head lice. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people from years ago thought, hey, I'm saying this close to Jen. I, if I had lice, it could jump over to her head. That is not reality. The only way it could really transfer from me to her is if I was wearing a stocking cap and there was one on it and we shared that stocking cap. So it does not spread the way people think. So we noticed we had some students that were missing a lot of school because they'd be like, oh, we found a bug, send them home. Whereas reality, we're trying to say we want kids in school. Yes, we want them to get treatment, but they don't need to leave school immediately. They can finish the day. Then that night, they have to get treatment before they can return. So we are trying to put in new procedures with head lice to say, hey, this aligns with what is currently medically appropriate. Because we've had some students, like I said, do two situations missed a lot of school and then they're getting truancy concerns and things like that for something that is not uh, as large of a medical concern as once thought. And so but, it's not putting other students at risk. Correct. We, not at all. So how how will it be communicated to the community uh, parent square newsletter? What I mean what is your process? For so what we're gonna do with this um, Jade and Cami plan to be at every open house okay. this fall to make sure this document is getting out to families. It's also going to be in the handbooks and they're as well working on educating our elementary, mill and high school staff to say, here are the new procedures. Here's the updated information about lice. Because like I said, we used to, second we saw something, send them home, send them home immediately. And it's like, well, wait, we have to take a step back. This that's what was once true, but is no longer true. But I think we do have to educate, like you're saying, Cody, so people know mm -hmm. those that the previously known facts 
are no longer that. It's been updated and here's what's really happening with lice. Yeah, you know, I think that'll be good because people don't know what they don't know. So I think that resource being sent mm -hmm. out will, will go a long way. So yeah. Um so so very good. Um any questions for Brian? Just one note that Brian had mentioned to me earlier on that is a great benefit is that this also will standardize and make sure we all we've always worked hard to this. This just makes sure that these are the same policies across buildings. That's nice. If yeah. a parent has different students in different buildings, it's the exact, it always has been, but sometimes it's hard to, now what exactly was that? By having it one side, and that's the district policy that just simplifies it for the parents. Yeah. You got it. So just, you don't have to vote on it, but just by giving me your okay, this then will be sent to the principals to make sure the, this goes in the student handbook. And like I said, Jade and Cami plan to be at all the open houses to just introduce themselves because many people knew Denise. So now we'll meet Jade and Cami and they will explain some of this. Great. Uh, any follow-up questions for Brian? All right. Good. Thank you again. Very good. Right. Um, next, information only, need the models of Nakusa Academy. Well, this is a follow-up from last week's workshop. Um, and so I guess would there be any questions about taking the teacher assistant role, eliminating that position, and then adding a teacher at the academy? We would be working between Cruz Academy and the Wise um, Charter School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think form and fashion. Yeah. Well, for me, you know, I think it's probably the most beneficial thing that can happen to the Cruz Academy because those two teachers can collaborate. They can use their expertise. It's a win-win. Yeah, I think we had a really healthy conversation and just hearing the professional standpoint from Nathan and, and Keith on, on the needs for it. And then I think the board was all in agreement. And it was Thank you for our general public. Could you give just a quick like one minute summary of what the change would be? Sure. What we would do is we currently have a teacher assistant and a teacher at Nakusa Academy. We would eliminate that teacher assistant position, make that into a full time teaching position, which would enable us then to work more closely with WISE, which is our online charter school, and then also move towards doing more project based learning at uh, Nakusa Academy as a way to hopefully the goal would be to better engage our students at the academy and students at Nakusa High School as well, because the project based wouldn't be just for Nakusa Academy, but be open to some Nakusa High School students. So. Yeah, I think it was yeah. a healthy conversation and it's, and it's... And I look at it too, it's an opportunity for them to venture into some other things as far as career development for many of those kids, getting them out there, seeing them with businesses, getting them focused on what they want to do, you know, at their junior year, instead of waiting until senior year. I mean, there's just so many benefits to that. Plus, incorporating the volunteering, because that gives those kids purpose. But then you can also take some of the students that are out in the high school that maybe don't have that same opportunity of volunteering. And say you only have three or four in the academy that are going to volunteer for something, but you need 10. Then pull some of the ones maybe from the high school that would, you know, and yeah. then you're interlinking and there isn't this separation. And I think it's great. It gives those um, at-risk at students who might not have a, might not think that they have a bright future, and I think this gives them a chance to kind of see see the light in a different aspect, and maybe give them an opportunity or option to pursue something to to better their life and career. So, um, any other conversations? All right. Um, thank you, Keith and Nathan. The next one here is the endowment fund grants twenty two twenty three information only. Yes, and so several years back, the Nakusa School District had some school forest property that we sold um, and for various purposes. And as a result of the, that money, the, the proceeds from that went into a fund um, from which we are able to make it that teachers can apply to do. And basically, it's an endowment um, that they can say, OK, um, I would like to do some I'd like to try something new. I'd like to experiment. I'd like to um, do some additional things based on this that basically they get approval from the um, building principal um, the district administrator signs off of that, that as well and there's this is probably having written a lot of grants i'll tell you this is the least red tapey grant you're ever going to see <laughs> to be able to help you know people working with that some examples of i'm just going to read a couple things that happened in this past year for example um or look i want to purchase new novels at various levels to enhance my classroom library um, and then here's one that helping, um, perfect, uh, this is a junior English, this would be a high school one of 
Yeah, as a teacher in a school that resides on Ho-Chunk land, I think it's important to offer text to students and highlight indigenous peoples in positive ways. And so giving new ways about the code talkers to expand the curriculum in, in new di and different ways. And these are, again, things that as part of a curriculum review cycle, we can certainly do that and provide that. But this can be, inst we, we want to do something, let's, let's go quick. Let's find something that we can experiment and work with just in time. And there's several other things in past years to be able to create um, not just academic environments, as I mentioned this, but also um, let's go ahead and do a volunteering type of area or people have gone, been able to do targeted field trips. But it's it's a phenomenal area that I've seen used by many teachers to go ahead and get it from the what about to let's do it in mm -hmm. a short area. And we've um, had several of that this last year and we're grateful for the endowment. And we're looking for more of those in the upcoming in the upcoming year. And the beauty of this is that we never touch the principal. We are always just getting the interest, which is amazing. Isn't it so a nice. $200, $200 grant? For yeah. It's a yeah. $200 yeah. grant. Mm -hmm. But I, I'll tell you what, if anyone can make $200 go a long yeah. way, it's a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions for anything? No, I think that sounds awesome. Right. Okay. And the second one on this is this is notice of annual. Is the annual notice that we have for our, for your approval. Basically, what this is referring to is every year um, we're required to talk about, for example, here are the academic standards that we use. And for the majority of it, we'll use the Wisconsin Model Academic Standards. We state those. But also, here are the educational options provided the, by the district. We talk about here's the various charter schools, the WISE Academy, STEM Academy, alternate NACUSA Academy. All these are listed for the general public to see. Here's dual credit programs, are working with the AP courses, Star College Now program, basically all of the things that allow us to be able to diversify our educational offerings. And again, it's a huge list to be able to help understand that here's how we can support our students, online courses, work study programs, summer school, um, et cetera, that goes through here. It's very extensive. And it's just every year we need to publish that to the general public and, and update this so they're aware of all the offerings that we provide. And we certainly are doing this more than just saying it's there. <laughs> We're pushing that out in other areas, but this is just making sure that we are educating the public. Um, and so this, as it's presented to you, is what we have posted on our website and to be able to make sure that that's a consistent process. Uh, any questions for Nathan? Wonderful. Um, so then at this time, I'll look for a motion to approve notice of annual notices. So moved. We'll Second. First and a second. Those all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Nathan. Uh, consent agenda on uh, employment. I'll read those off. Congratulations to these new employees. Em I might butcher a couple of these last names. Emily Brill, um, another Emily Hockowitz, uh, Cassidy Ferguson. Um, they're all third grade uh, teachers. And she also is a third grade teacher. That was Miss Red. Brooklyn is Brooklyn is okay. the third grade teacher as well. Uh, uh, Brooklyn Seafelt, a uh, third grade teacher. Uh, Jason Julius, who is here tonight, welcome again. AMS principal. Uh, resignation: Sarah Dobreiner, uh, Wendy Jansen, and uh, retirement: Wen Wendy Dudley. So congratulations on Wendy's retirement. Oh, okay. oh, how many years? Thirty-two years. Thirty-three years in there. Yeah, oh. thirty-two. And if I, we could just have a quick note for each one of those. So going back to Sarah Dobreiner, she had served in the district since 2014, um, and she had a hiatus due to illness and came back to us. We certainly she served long. We very much appreciate her dedication to our students and her service very much. On that one, uh, Keith, can you just talk? Yeah, Wendy Jansen is really only resigning from this position because she's accepted a new position mm -hmm. with the Boys and Girls Club, but she'll be home based at Nakusa High School and Alexander Middle School as a graduation specialist, replacing Julie Helmick, who has moved into our business ed position. So, Wendy is staying in the district. Wendy Jansen is staying in the district and just moving into really a new position. And that's through Boys and Girls. That's, Club. Boys and Girls that's Club. why she's yeah. So you won't here. see her next. We won't have her on the approval the next thing because she'll be a Boys and Girls Club employee. Right. Yes. On that one. And let me speak to Wendy Dudley, who I've worked with for the past five years. And I'll just tell you this. If you walked, if you were a student in Wendy Dudley's class, you knew she loved her. She knew, you knew she loved her. And there are so many students that we had that um, we hear they got challenges or whatever else and would say, oh, where'd that go? Because she loved them. And they knew that. And mm -hmm. they were the, the community when I would be able to go in there and, and certainly substitute, but be able to work with them is that they just care that 
it mattered to her to make sure that they invested in community, they worked with each other, and she put her everything into it. So just want to well-deserved retirement. It was a hard decision for her because she loves also not just the community. She talks specifically about want. She appreciated the teacher community that she worked with. And just she basically lived what she, what she provided for her students. She lived in among the other teachers. And so we appreciate her service very much. Well, congratulations to those new hires. And uh, Wendy, we hope you enjoy your retirement. And thank you for your dedication to the district. Um, Jennifer, do you want to read the donations for this month? I know there's a couple oh, on there. Yep, so um, $25 for Sacred Heart Collections. And you said there's other ones? Oh, I guess there. usually there's athletic donations, so my apologies. So thank you tonight for the for those donations. Um, backpack for kids, and uh, thank you to those donors for tonight, too. So. Um, minutes 614 was the board meeting, 621 was our special board meeting, uh, the July 5th was our board workshop. Um, at this time, I will look for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So, uh, first by Dave, second. second by Ann. Those all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Uh, feature agenda items, August 2nd will be our board workshop here at 6 p.m. August 9th will be our regular board meeting here at 6.30, um, covering some policy governance, operational expectations, and then student and employee handbooks, uh, behavior management information, uh, strategic planning, accountability, um, and some other informational um, sessions there. So um, at this time, we will look to... Um, have a motion first and then a roll call into a, a journey to closed session. I'll move that, make that motion. Uh, first by Dave. I'll second it. Second by Jennifer. And we'll do the roll call vote. Uh, oh, yes. Mark is not here. And? Yes. Jennifer? Yeah. And I say yes. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. I think tonight. we need to read out the. Oh, should I read it out? Yeah, okay. Before we adjourn, sure. And we make the motion if we could, because we have to say specifically. Sure. Session. Consideration of motion to adjourn in a closed session pursuant to Section 1985-1C of Wisconsin State Statutes to consider employment promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercise responsibility, specifically to discuss administrative contracts. Um, so then at this time, I'll look for a motion again and I will do Yep. One second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Cody, yes. Yes. Mark is not here. Ann? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And Ryan yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you for everyone attending tonight. Um, we're going to head into closed session here shortly. If board members want to use the restroom quick or anything like that. Yeah. Thank you so much.